Hi, it's Eliana at Awakening Cosmic Reality Show, and I have Penny Bradley with me today. Welcome, Penny. Thanks for having me back. Thank you. Today we're going to be discussing what we call the pecking order. We're going to discuss the Anunnaki. We're going to discuss what is this whole second coming of the Anunnaki, why it's happening, you know, things of that nature, NLP, and how persuasive stuff can be, the energy of persuasiveness. So let's dive in. All right. Um, I recently had folks asking me, so who really runs the world? And I put out some, <clears throat> I guess you could call them teaser posts on my wall. And, and they were private, private posts, you know, just friends only. And it was to test the waters. Are people really ready for that kind of information? And, uh, you know, it sounds arrogant, but I think I have some of the smartest, most with it folks uh, on Facebook on my wall. I've kept it small. I'm below 1,200 Facebook friends. Um, I'm not one of those I need everybody on my wall people. I wanted to keep it where I actually knew these people. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> in fact, I made a post recently about, you know, I get asked about people that send friend requests if the, if they're mutuals. So, you know, if you want me to give you a good review, you need to make sure I know you. <laughs> yeah. Knowing people is key because infiltration is happening everywhere on social media platform platforms. And I keep telling everyone, don't post pictures of your children on social Do media. Do not. Do not post pictures of your children or your grandchildren on social media because people can use that to kidnap those kids. Or just as bad, they take those photographs and sell them as, as porn. Exactly. And this happens on this planet. And sometimes kids are taken off world into slavery. So this, this is a big thing. That you, you will never see my grandchildren on my wall. Yeah. I have grandchildren, and um, my granddaughter is, what, 21? My grandson just graduated high school. So, yeah, I have grandkids. <laughs> and I love them very much. I love them so much, I will not put their pictures on Facebook. Yeah, so, that's um, good. Because I know what happens to kids. Now, when I posted these teasers, mm -hmm. I think about half the people were actually ready for the re information. And the other half just went deep dive into religion. They were going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what the backing order is they were going to tell me everything and it was all based on their religion and i'm like okay since the majority are still stuck in a religious mindset this isn't going to get us very far because whatever i tell them they're going to filter through their religion and uh I'm also finding that there's still this dominance mindset. That's what I see as the actual biggest problem on this planet right now is that we want to dominate each other regardless of whether what we believe is true or not. We don't care, but it's ours. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> so um, I'm going to tell you what I understand to be the truth and you can filter it however you want. And that's to your audience. Filter it however you think you have to through your religion, through what you already believe. But if you listen to what I actually said, 
It's the absolute truth as I know it. Yeah, it's 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 a galactic order that has to do with our planet as well and what's happening up there and down here. It's all interconnected. That's why when I saw your post, I'm like, I'm doing research on the Anunnaki and this pecking order looks like top-notch stuff that we should go over. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I haven't talked about them much because they really prefer to be... Um, anonymous <laughs> and because someone who is a liar in our community talked about him a lot and almost everything he said was a lie mm -hmm. but i have altars that work with them this is my source of information is altar bleed over so we all know I have altars. We all know I shift regularly and uncontrollably. Um, <clears throat> and that I will jump from topic to topic as I change altars. Okay. Now I have one altar who is a bailiff at the court that's in a hyperspace bubble off of Saturn. And a bit, if anybody's been to court, the bailiff's an important person, but not really. You have absolutely no influence on how court proceeds. You're just there to make sure there's order. And occasionally you're sent to serve arrest warrants or summons to be a witness. So it's an important job. But it's not. It's not like I'm a lawyer or a judge or anything. I'm just this officer of the court. But it means I get to sit through a lot of court cases. Because I have to make sure that the defendants behave. I have to make sure the witnesses behave. I have to make sure the victims of the defendants behave. <clears throat> so... Because of this, I've sat through a lot of cases and gotten a pretty good idea of how galactic law operates. And in most ways, it's really very simple and basic. It's if you do harm, you're going to be held responsible for it. That there is a set of, of laws that regulate how advanced races deal with primitive ones. And I'm sorry, New Age, but humans are on Earth are a primitive race. We are not advanced ready for ascension. I'm sorry that pokes a big hole in your bubble, but <clears throat> reality is we're a baby race, roughly the equivalent of two-year-olds. No, mine hit. I won't share my stuff with you. I'll hit you over the head with it first. This is our racial attitude. All of us, regardless of our skin color. And also, <clears throat> some folks are not going to like this either but there is less genetic difference in all of humanity than in a single troop of chimpanzees in Africa, period. All of the stuff we fight over is bullshit. So <clears throat> we are one people, whether we like it or not. Yes, there are some variations, but if I recall what the guardians told us, it was more based on what the local people thought was sexy than anything else. If the local folks like light skin, you're going to end up with light skin. If the local folks like dark skin, you're going to end up with dark skin. Period. Genetic manipulation. Genet genetic manipulation by what's considered locally sexy yeah makes sense 
So that's how we choose our mates. And some reason, some regions, the males chose the mates. In those re regions, we ended up with tiny women that were petite and did what they were told. In other regions, the women chose the mates, and we ended up with large alpha types. <laughs> Warriors. Warriors. Men who could provide and protect. And Bonnie. so... Muscular. You ended, yes, you ended up with the two obvious types based on who was who was choosing the partners. Mm -hmm. So this is how humans on Earth have operated for the whole time there have been humans on Earth. So <clears throat> the other thing makes stirring the pot is that when humans get together, we're curious. And we try each other out. And sometimes it sticks. So you end up with lots of in between. And for thousands of years, they either killed off or pretended the in between didn't exist. And that's just as stupid as everything else we do. So. Yeah. Because we don't know any better, perhaps. Like, there's no examples of what's above us, what's in space. We're not being shown who the rest of the galaxies are and who's out there. We have each other as an example, and we try our best, but sometimes things get huge, small, big, everything in between. This planet offers so many opportunities to try so many different things, and you learn by trial and error on this planet and what's good for you and what's not good well, for you to choose from. I don't think that we as humans should actually care what's out there. Why? I think we should be doing our own thing. Now, um, because I'm a bailiff, I've interacted with a lot of ETs. Some of them are Jahami. Uh, Michael Lee Hill calls them Sams, but they're the same group. And one of them in particular told me, well, he was in court to be tried. And he was actually found not guilty and released. Shock. But he, <laughs> he told me, What do you do when you own a ranch and the monkeys in the back 40 start building houses and farming? That's their attitude. They own earth. Hmm. And we are the monkeys in the back 40 that started building houses and farming. And then the feds showed up and said, they're a protected species. You can't hurt them. But meanwhile, before, prior to that, they had been eating us. So we were one of their favorite meals. And what are the Zayami? Can you describe them? Uh, they, <clears throat> the ones that are born on Earth are seven to nine feet tall. The ones that are born on their world run nine to 12 feet tall. The nitrogen in our atmosphere is poison, mildly poisonous to them. It doesn't kill them outright, but it shortens their lifespan, makes them smaller, um, closer to our size, actually more compatible with us. Hmm. Um, in old age, even the ones born here can get really tall. They get to about, a, they get to the equivalent of 50 years old in their cycle, and then they suddenly get twice as tall. 
And their blue collar folks are among us and are referred to generally as tall whites, but they are the same species. Most of the Nordics are either the Jahami or Germans pretending to be ETs. And the Germans from off world generally call themselves Plejaren because Earth is in the Pleiades. They figure they're not lying. Earth, Sirius are all part of the Pleiades. So they come here and they're Plejaren, which is their word for Pleiadian. So you have to go through the the old books and i do have a collection of them in a, a google drive file i can give you the link to, to that to share where you can go through the ufo abduction books written by the people who who were the abductees and you will see it consistently these ships from the pleiadian plejarans that that they consistently speak German. They are consistently tall and blonde. They are consistently in Hanabu type saucers. They even, some of them have swastikas on the wall. When, when you look at it from an objective point of view, instead of saying, oh, these are just ETs. If you look at it objectively, you can't help but see the German influence through all of it. Mm -hmm. um, Can I ask even, you a question? Even even Billy Billy Myers Simyaze spoke German and had swastikas on her Hanabu ship. Mm. Uh, speaking of Germans, were they the first ones to land on the moon, or was it somebody else? The Germans were on the moon before anyone else in the current era. Okay. In past times, we are not the first civilization of humans to reach space. Mm -hmm. Were they the first to build a base on the moon or did the US Navy concurrently build bases on the moon? Because I've heard interesting history that Werner von Braun helped the U.S. Navy and the Army to actually get to the moon by the 1950s and start building underground bases. So were the Germans there before the 1950s building bases on the moon specifically? <clears throat> the Germans used time travel. Okay. They were on the moon 400 years ago. Okay, so with time travel, it's possible to get wherever you need in these 1940s, 30s, 50s. That doesn't really matter because with time yeah. travel, they can go back and build it any time they needed it. And then what, one of one of my altars was <clears throat> a real Valkyrie we copied the Valkyrie myth because we did not want to affect history. And mm -hmm. that's what we thought we were doing. And we went back in time. We started at 400 years ago and went back further. And that meant that those of us who actually interacted with these people had to learn their dialect at the time. Lang language shifts over time sometimes a lot so if you're picking up people from 400 years ago okay for americans get an a get a copy of the original shakespeare that's from 1600 approximately and see if you can read that <clears throat> and that's english <laughs> that's different English no that's English that's exactly the same thing German today is not the same as it was in the past 
Yeah, it's like when reading Shakespeare, thy art, thy heart, thy mind, thy heart. It's like the thy is used a lot. And I, okay, old English, current English, new English, old English, different English. Well, there are folks today that still use the these and those. Yes. But um, if you're trying to go back in time and recruit people, for your colonies, then you have to speak their language. So those of us who were used as Valkyries, we not only had to fit the mythology, but we had to be able to speak their language, their dialect too. So we would go into an area, we would get a ship full of people who had died in a battle. We would regenerate them in the regen tanks. And then we would teach them what we needed them to know and set them up on a colony. And why did we do this? It was because if you're setting up a brand new colony, there is no infrastructure. So you needed someone who could operate at a technology level that didn't require electronics, that didn't require commerce, where you could go in, they could farm, they could build houses from the rocks, they could set up a water system, and we taught them the hydraulics so that they could do a proper water system, not what they had in their time. But yeah, they knew how to make wells, those, those spiral wells. Mm -hmm. They knew how to do that a thousand years ago. Mm, interesting. So, they had technologies that we have lost that made them perfect for establishing new colonies with no infrastructure when they got when they landed all they required was dirt that would grow food water that on the surface air and some sort some sort of shelter system to start off with and give them 50 years and you had an established colony. Mm -hmm. and the Germans allowed them to keep whatever religion they had at the time. So you'll go to different colonies in, in <clears throat> Bundfreie Deutsche Welten. That's what they call their area. And each one will be different because they came from a different point in history and they spoke a different dialect. They had a different religion and they're set up as separate colonies with their own way of life. But that that's what they were doing. And eventually outsiders would come in and join them and, and assimilate. And they would end up with, well, the last time I heard a count, there were a thousand planets with a billion people each. Hmm. So there are a lot of Germans out there. Hmm. And yeah. these are these are all human beings who were originally from Earth. They're us. They just speak German. And from different time frames, timelines. Yeah. Well, not timelines, just it's yeah. all the same timeline. Yeah. It's just we would go back and we would deliberately take people who were killed. Mm -hmm. We would go to great battles and we would deliberately take the people who died so that we were not affecting the timeline. The hard part was getting women because women were not usually in the battles. Mm -hmm. So... Um, <clears throat> it's like use all the resources that you can collect as much as you can regenerate and make make these folks useful again just elsewhere for yeah. resources resources and we would bring a certain level of medical technology so their lives were much better on the colony than they had been on earth hmm. that makes sense so the bailiff, you had witnessed a case that was very interesting that's connected to the Anunnaki. Can you describe what that was like? 
Uh, and what the see. pecking order is. Okay. I'm going to start at Marduk. Okay. <clears throat> the guardians told me that Marduk is the legal owner of Earth. He's the registered owner of the planet. Not us. But he is required to he's required to kind of control us like like a parent. He's supposed to be guiding us to become good galactic citizens and he had really screwed that up. And that's why he was being tried. Um, he was tried for violation of the prime. That's the, the laws regarding advanced races at interacting with primitive ones. He was tried for crimes against the sentient species. And that was because he was accepting human sacrifice. Mm. Um, he was tried for corruption as L. L is the L is the title E L, and in the Bible it refers to God, but. In the legal terms, it's the person who holds the tablets of destiny and can control the actual physics of this part of space. And he had those. And he, as part of that position, he held court. And he would demand... He would demand payment to hear a case. And some of the payments were gold, some were resources, some were blood sacrifices. And so he was he was tried for all of those three things. He was found guilty. The entire year of the trial, he sat and sobbed like a baby claiming to be repentant, that he was sorry he did all of this. He didn't realize we were sentient, blah, 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 blah. And the court bought it. And so they did not execute him on the spot. They fitted him with a bomb instead. Now, the dude is alive and well, and he's in, okay, he had a base underground at Pine Gap in Australia. And that's where he's being held, is in his base with his people underground. There is an American base on top of it. So they're aware of his comings and goings and he's not supposed to be going anywhere. But he does. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's very much alive. And anybody who thinks he's dead is, is wrong. Um, delusional, even. Mm -hmm. um, he still contacts me because I'm bailiff. And... Um, He was replaced as far as his administrative functions. The guardians are operating the administrative functions. Um, there were certain, there were certain things he was responsible for that have been passed off to a um, human woman. Well, she's not really human. She's a hybrid. Mm. So, um, 
as far as I can tell, she's doing okay so far. Mm -hmm. The guardians are happy with her. Yeah, and then there's this whole new thing in the New Age community and UFO community that the second coming of Anunnaki is happening and Anki's returning with the Grail 12-stranded DNA to give this back to us, to give it back to us through the holographic medical technology and that it is going to happen. There's a few folks spreading this around. We know who that is. <clears throat> or... um, Dan, that sounds like some really good drugs. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Or uh, the entities are visiting the folks and provoking yeah. these uh, agendas. Whenever the, the you start channeling, everybody tells me that they know the difference between all the stuff out there. When I was channeling, I couldn't. I was never sure who was talking to me or through me. And I got to where I didn't trust any of it, and I stopped allowing it. And, I mean, come on. I have enough trouble dealing with altars and what I righteously recall as those altars. Trying to mix that with some some channeling, some spirit tells me, you know. Or, or worse, because V2K mimics it, and when you're in V2K, you're listening to a CIA computer. So you're listening to some AI somewhere tell you something, and at the same time, you have no idea that's an AI. You think, you think you're think talking to some ET. And basically, if a person is not wearing an EMF blocker, at the time they're channeling, I'm not going to listen to them because I'm assuming they're listening to V2K until proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. And I think that more people need to be aware that V2K has been in operation in the United States since 1980. Well, I may be a year or two off. It may be as late as 83. But by 1989, they were using it in warfare in Kuwait. That was why whole battalions of Iraqi troops laid down their guns and surrendered. was because of V2K. So we know it was used in 1989 in Kuwait in battle we know it has been viable as a war weapon since then. And people are still telling me it doesn't exist? It exists. It's like voice of God technology that can connect with your brain patterns and it can talk to you. It can send signals to you. It could be AI. It can send ET transmissions through. It can send through anything, basically. And it looks like and sounds like an ET and you're inviting the second coming of the Anunnaki and beautiful, bald-headed, elongated skull Enki into our reality, when in fact you're inviting trouble into reality by this I, agenda. The, the real Enki has white hair, and it's really curly, and he has a really curly... It's not kinky like African hair, but it's close. So it's uh, racially, it would be like like the Jewish or Arabic peoples who have really curly hair, or mm -hmm. some of the Celtic peoples with the kinks. Mm -hmm. You know that you know they put a put a comb through their hair while it's wet, and they end up with just masses of curls. Yeah, it's it's like that, and his beard is almost as curly, so he braids it and puts beads in it, and his beard comes down to his to his nipple line. He basically looks human, but he's bigger, lots bigger. 
And I don't understand why people have so much trouble understanding this. They make mm -hmm. him look like the devil. They make him look like, like Satan himself. They make him, you know, they oh. shake. I have no idea what they're seeing, why they think all these things about him. Can he shapeshift and change form? No. Okay. It, he's a physical being in a physical body. Because I saw him as having, exactly as you described, by ha but having black hair. Okay. I, ha I saw him with black hair, exactly as you described, just black hair, not blonde, and beard was black sort of kind of dark brown that's how i saw him maybe in his younger years he used to look like that before yeah in his younger years he did look like that but he's approaching four hundred thousand years old mm -hmm. he's getting to be an old man <laughs> yeah but what is being described in the current you know atmosphere in the new age community and uh, the UFO community is that Anki has an elongated skull. He is super skinny with slitted eyes, kind of blue, white translucent skin, tall, sort of muscular, but very slim. That does not sound like Anki to me at all. That sounds like a gray reptilian hybrid to me, what's being drawn and portrayed and shown. Now, you and I both knew, know who this individual is, and, you know, we, we don't participate on those narratives, but that's not how Anki looks like, or Anu, for that matter. That's, that's not what the Anunnaki look like. That's a different be kind of being. Exactly. I agree with and you completely. I, I've been hearing, okay, I'll just put it out there. I've been hearing from that same individual she has conflated all of the re reptilians into one species and that's an absolute error uh, there are at least a thousand different species of reptilians and each one operates separately independently and is not with the others and the idea that a sea car that hatches at 10 meters and gets to 10 times that or more in adulthood, that that being is going to have sex with a human being when its penis is bigger than you are. And yet she's going around telling people that that being is raping humans. When I heard that, I laughed my ass off. She has absolutely no clue what she's talking about. Well, she's just channeling bullshit. Now, so, yeah. I'm going to say something for the public i vet people before i have them on my show if you haven't seen someone on my show they they've either told me no yeah i haven't been able to get a hold of them yeah or they're full of shit yeah so i had that person on my show before this second coming of anunnaki started so before it was a different tune and a different story altogether, more sane, more 3D, more sane and 3D based reality before, but the tune has changed. I took an instant dislike to her. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you why. Yes, please. She was a new age guru until she had Stephen Cho on her show. And he was a for real whistleblower who was talking about being on an earth level military and there being ETs in the enemy ranks. What's his name? Stephen Cho. Cho. Okay. He was Malaysian. 
and he was killed before she could get the video uploaded. So suddenly she was a whistleblower amongst us. Mm -hmm. Now, in normal military, that would be called stolen valor. Mm -hmm. And I took an instant dislike to her because of that. And I have listened to some of what she said, and none of it ever made sense. And, and there's the other one who's promoting giants that are under Florida, that his uh, military source is telling him that there's giants under Florida. Okay, there are giants. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put it out there. There are giants. We have always had other forms of humanity here with us. We have gen, it was what, about 10,000 years ago, humanity, Homo sapiens, killed off as many of the giants as they could find. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are left have hidden. So, some of them went into stasis because they had technology that we didn't. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the mounds have giants underneath them. And yeah. as as these are, are coming out of stasis, the American military is capturing them and putting them in underground prisons. Oh, there's one under Florida, under the deep ocean. There's a prison under Florida, but there's where giants are held prisoner. But there's not giants in stasis under Florida itself. It's off the Gulf coast to the left of florida there is a prison you're right there's a base under in a research facility under the deep ocean with giants being held prisoner and other huge extraterrestrials being held prisoner this is what i saw in remote viewing but that other sources military source sir, says that there's an underground civilization under florida and giants in stasis under florida itself which i did not find what I found was that prison deep, okay. deep under the ocean. Now, how did I know there were giants waking up? Because I've been hearing them telepathically for the last eight years, screaming in my head for help, help that I am unable to give them. And it's, it's maddening to listen to someone ask for help and you can't help them. Exactly. And this military source is saying that this giant under Florida is Quetzalcoatl, Ninhazita, Veracocha, Kukla Khan, and the other shamans who were at this huge conference they were waking up the giant chanting and waking up the giant under Florida. There's no giant directly under Florida. There's these giants in that prison compound. So it's like, what are people uh, connecting to? Nangish Zida is not in a prison. Nangish Zida is currently the king of the Jahami and has been since September of 2018. So, no giant Ninhazita under Florida. Yeah, uh, he's he's been the king there since September 28th, California time, uh, 2018, when he replaced Nanar, whose head had been exploded in court off Saturn. Interesting. But where is Ninhazita physically? He's on, they call their planet Za. <clears throat> they kind of slur the S in between an S and a Z. It's kind of Zaham. It's not a normal English kind of a word. It's a Zaham. And that's what they call their planet. We call it Nibiru. And it's orbiting a dwarf red star. A brown dwarf, I think is the proper term. 
and there are three planets that are orbiting that dwarf star and the dwarf star is orbiting it's inside the Oort cloud i can tell you that and Nibiru, I, need, I need to take a short break can yeah. you stop the recording yeah sure just a sec um so we're going to shift gears a little bit and discuss what Anki and El Enlil are all about, what they were doing before in history and what they're doing now, because people are saying, oh, Anki is the bad one, Enlil is the good one. Both of these beings did things that could, cons could be considered either or labels and classification they were neither that nor that, neither good or bad. They they played roles and they did things for the survival of their race. And we're gonna we're going to discuss these beings and what's going on. Okay. Um the Shahami and their home world have some really weird rules about secession when whenever a king retires or dies he can be replaced by battle in which case whoever beat him becomes the next king or if he's too old and steps back because they practice polygamy they end up with a bunch of, of eligibles. Now, the rules are it should be the oldest son who was, whose mother was also Shahami, which would make Enlil the heir because his mother was Shahami. Enki's mother was Draco. So even though he was the oldest son, his mother was not Shahami. But if either of them had a son with their sister, they would automatically become king. So they had a sister. We know her as Ninma. Mm-hmm. And both of them had daughters with her. Neither had a son. But she was trying to play the game. So she was as much as fault as the guys were. So they were all trying to become the head of state in their own way. And as long as she was alive, the boys were going to fight over. Now, I don't know who her mother was, whether it was, whether she was Shahami or half Draco. Now, there are people out there who swear that instead of a Draco princess, it was a Pleiadian princess. I'm not going to fight with those folks. This is straight out of the books. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this is straight out of the Sumerian tablets. Now, I'm not just going by Sitchin, but y'all should be aware that I have been good friends with Sasha Lesson, who does his own research, and I was decent friends with Gerald Clark, who did his own research, and I've read a lot of the other work that's coming forth, and these people argue over everything. Okay, if you're going to go through and do an Anaki research and you don't speak Sumerian yourself, you're going to listen to fight after fight after fight after fight after fight that makes the SSP folks look like we get along. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I've heard that 
the Anunnaki intermingled with Draco and they did hybridization and some of them are Draco and they look human. Just because somebody is half Draco doesn't mean they look like a big reptilian. They can it, look humanoid. It doesn't mean they're evil either. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So it's like people need people need to get off their prejudices. Each and every individual decides for themselves what they're going to be. And unless you're something like an ant that lives in a hybrid in, in a a you know every everybody ha shares the same mind. If as long as you are an individual, you choose for yourself what you are going to be. Mm -hmm. And people need to stop this bullshit about Draco makes you evil because it doesn't. It may give you certain abilities. It may give you a certain outlook. In my case, it made it where justice matters to me. Honor matters to me. Now, does that make me evil? No. I mean, I just want what's right. Have I killed anybody to enforce honor? No. I've outed them. I've done videos about who in our community are criminals. And I'm not talking about criminals out in space. I'm talking about criminals here. And there's also imposters and infiltrators and a bunch of other things going on. Im imposters and infiltrators and all of that. All of that stuff's legal. I didn't out any of them because what they're doing is legal. I outed the people who are who are defrauding others. I outed the people who are committing fraud, who are who are taking financial advantage of people. Um through lies or through sexual activity. Yeah, there's there's a uh... I wasn't talking about yeah. agents. I wasn't talking yes. about lawyers. I wasn't mm -hmm. talking about religious fanatics. I was talking about people who were predatory. And in the SSP communities, there there are those people who have programming that's fully activated and it's on. They're doing things that normal people wouldn't do. Well, so, yeah. Okay, now... I know you've said you don't have altars. Those of us who do have altars, we all have a sex kitten. So you can expect if the sex kitten pops out, the sex kitten is going to hit on you, male or female. Mm -hmm. We all have assassin altars. We don't just kill willy-nilly. We only kill our target. Yeah, it's very specific. We all have military foot soldiers in our altars. And then we have altars who are trained for specific jobs. Like I was a pilot navigator. Like I have altars who do analysis. You hand hand that altar a stack of of personnel files and a job description and I can choose the right candidates for what you want mm -hmm. and they will be able to work together <laughs> yeah I'm not saying that there's not altars I've seen SSP assets who their altars come and go in and out you yeah, can tell the difference do that. yes yeah so I know that altars exist what they had what they were doing with me was not alters it was one job at a time mm -hmm. like for five years ten years that's why I did a whole 60 and back all in one chunk it was one personality one person doing one job at a time with training one at a time it wasn't it wasn't that that I I didn't have the alters but it was still me in this body 
kept age regressing me to look younger in my 30s, throughout my 60 and back, never aged, but one job chunk at a time, one training set at a time. And it would be five, 10 years. And then another one would come, the job, and another one. So I think for some, alters are efficient because you can get more things done quicker. And then some of, some of us are used in a huge chunk of 60 and back, one job at a time. And you do that. I, so, have, I have 90 alters wow. working on 60 and backs right now. They were all pulled in basically November of 2018 because there was a planet that was destroyed and we were we are time traveling back to just before that to rescue the colony. Mm -hmm. And it took that many versions of me working on it along with everyone else and um god what is her name gina colvin hill i believe her name is she has a, a youtube channel where she takes pictures of ships coming through the sun the sun is a portal and i'm in those pictures because each of those 90 altars is operating an armada of 20 German ships carrying refugees. And we are taking them and reestablishing colonies in the Oort cloud, which is not on Earth, not going to bother Earth, but those people will survive. And they are all humans originally from Earth. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I we keep getting confronted with with um, ships that are trying to capture the refugees to turn them into cyborgs. Mm. That's real. Those programs exist on Mars. Uh, the biggest factory, I believe, is on Pluto. Oh, wow! The SSP has a base on Pluto. <laughs> and an on an Aki base on Pluto as well, separate from the SSP stuff. Oh, there's all every large moon and every planet in the solar system has bases from somebody. Yeah. Saturn, Saturn belongs to the Guardians. Now we were talking, we were originally talking about the pecking order. Yes. I'm gonna work from Marduk up. Sure. Okay. Marduk owns Earth. He likes to think that he's king of Jahami, but he isn't. But he's actually in rebellion against the Jahami, but he's still technically below them. And the Jahami are what we call the Anunnaki. Yes. They own everything inside the Oort cloud. From the outside, we look like a big ball of ice and dust. It almost is thick enough to work as a Dyson sphere. But you can still get through it. But that's why people, people use loosely use the sun as a portal is because the di that Oort cloud slash Dyson sphere out there is hard to get through. So they use the, the sun portal instead. But everything inside that big snowball look belongs to the Shahami. Now, the big snowball of the Oort cloud sits almost smack in the middle of the Draco Empire. So you're looking at your town belongs to Marduk. 
your county belongs to the Anunnaki. Your state belongs to the Draco. Now, what's over them is, I don't know what they call it in their language. I hear it telepathically. What comes through in English to me uh, is the phrase galactic authority. And they are the government of the galaxy. They are the level four civilization that has godlike powers and controls all of the energy of the galaxy. They have a legislative function that looks straight out of the Star Wars Republic. And they argue all the time. They have a court system that the branch office is, is in that hyperspace bubble in orbit off Saturn. And our local version is operated by a group called the Council of Five. And there are five races involved and they're basically greys, all of them. And they enforce galactic law here. And they're very slow and very basic. You're either guilty or you're not. And if you're guilty, you get executed. That's justice, okay? Now, in between that, they have, they have a military police that they call the Guardians. And they are handpicked from every world in the galaxy. So it's not one species. It's something from everybody. They pick the smartest, the most physically able, and the most ethical, so they can't be bought. Like, um, like the untouchables during during the prohibition era but they're a military police if they show up in your sky you should be worried you should not be thankful we're talking gestapo people to fear And I hear about, oh, yeah, the, the Guardians are going to come do this. The Guardians are come do that. Uh, what I hear is the Guardians are going to come give us an opportunity for them to parent us as a species and teach us how to be good galactic citizens. And if we say no, we will be pushed back into the Stone Age to start over. That's why they're called guardians. Because we have, we out there in space have become a threat to the galaxy. Not only are we kidnapping our own children for service in these programs. And yes, we are. That's why I'm public. But we are going into wars we have no business being in. We are taking prisoners of war, converting them into cyborgs, and selling them to ETs in exchange for toys. Under galactic law, nobody can give us anything but toys. If they do, they will be executed themselves. Some of them give us broken toys. And we have been take, we have been literally selling our fellow human beings into slavery in exchange for broken toys. That's what we do out there. Mm -hmm. It's not glamorous. It's not sexy or beautiful. It is outer space. It is just as dangerous as it is on Earth or anywhere else in this universe. Well, what we do is horrid. Other, 
Okay, when you read, now I told you I was going to name names of people I'm not mad at, okay? Um, Paul, the guy out Area 54, the guy that interacted with the tall whites. He talked about that when he interacted with them, he would that you do not get between them and their children and they will tell you we love our children that is because they know all of our stuff out in space is manned by kidnapped children and they think that means we don't love our children so when they're saying that they're saying we know what you're doing Mm-hmm. And Anki and Enlil, what are these guys doing now? Because they're saying Anki's coming back. Anki's coming back to give us gifts. And Enlil is they the bad one. Left. They never left. Why so, would he be coming back when he never left? So where are they now? Where's Anki, Enlil, Nimna? Where are they now? Um, Nimna is dead. She mm-hmm. was she was killed to end the first war between the brothers. She died on Mars. Nengish Ziva, aka Thoth, raised her from the dead. She was the beautiful woman he called forth from the dead. He married her. She was known to history as Mahat. And in the second war between the brothers, he sacrificed her to end the war. That's not in the records. That's information that I got from him. And when he told me, he seemed very repentant about it. But to be honest, these people, these folks are very manipulative. So I'm not sure if he was or not. Mm-hmm. But the story had the feel of truth to it. Now, can Nimna reincarnate as something else and exist? She, um, she can. She can reincarnate here, but. And this is something some folks out there won't tell you. Anunnaki souls are too big to fit into a human body. They have to fractal down. It requires six, zero, 60 human bodies to incarnate a, an Anunnaki as human. Mm-hmm. Now, they won't have a hive mind. They will be separate individuals, but they these separate individuals will all have that higher self. Because hmm. honestly, uh, I think I connected to a consciousness of Nimna, and I was talking to her, and she was saying, I was always the peacemaker between those brothers, Anki and Enlo. She was always the peacemaker, trying to make peace, trying to have peace, but peace was hard to get between those two. So I think I connected to a form of consciousness and I saw a physical appearance. Yeah, she she may have thought that about herself. Yeah. But, But the reality was she kept having babies with both of them. Yeah, she did. Even history shows that because in polygamy go back and forth between your own sect, between your own circle and group. You don't interbreed with outsiders. Well, she was engaged to Anki and had a child with Anlil during that engagement. So Anu forbade her to ever marry. Mm -hmm. But she was on the team with Anki and Thoth that created us now 
they did not create humanity. And I think that's an important thing that people are missing the boat on. There was a version of humanity here when the Anunnaki got here. Mm -hmm. But they were little, about four foot tall, and they were telepathic, and they had their own future ahead of them. And the Anunnaki saw them as potential slave labor, and so they modified them in their own image. So they changed us. And that's why they were in trouble for violating the prime. Makes sense. So they did not respect that the version of humanity that was here was worthy of respect. So they said, well, we need slaves, so we're going to do this. And they turned them all into homo sapiens. Well, the fossil record shows that there were 22 different versions of humanity between what was here when they got here and what's here now. Mm -hmm. And what most people today don't understand is that there are at least three versions of humanity still here right now. And two of them look close enough that they're coexisting and the third one is in hiding in, in underground. So those are the giants. Mm. That there are differences in size between us and them. And then the, the two that, that passes each other, um, there are differences in IQ. There are differences in psionic abilities there. But so far, they've been able to coexist mm -hmm. and even interbreed. So there's a lot of hybrids between the two, which actually makes it easier for them to coexist. Mm -hmm. And also, what is Anki and Enlil doing now? Well, Anki is... Uh... <sighs> They both kind of sat back to see what we're doing. They're watching us. They put things in motion. They, um, the last I heard, Anlil was using an underground tunnel system and traveling between the Vatican and Jerusalem. He has been seen both places. Um, and Key has also been seen both places um and key has been seen in africa there are bases in puerto rico tanzania australia there's one in um the american southwest and these were all compounds or bases that that belong to marduk well, Enki is Marduk's father. So any place that belongs to his son, he's welcome at. And Anlil's Enki's brother and Marduk's uncle. So he's been known to be seen at those places too. And it's... They're both considered to be too old to be in power. Um, Enlil's son... Na Nanar was in charge. He was king in um, their home world. And in the summer of 2018, he decided to abduct me. And they put me into a technology that 
telepathically, they called it the truth machine. And it's a form of execution. This was not something that, that I was expected to survive. And I found out since then it was the Draco Queen Mother who sent the Germans to come rescue me. But because I'm a bailiff in the court of Saturn, the guardians got involved and arrested the set of them that abducted me, and Nanar was part of it. And there were two of them, Nengish Sita and Enki, were released. And the rest were brought, hauled into court, and they refused to submit to the authority of the court. Um, they behaved disrespectfully and were executed on the spot. That was the first time that I was consciously aware of an execution in the court. Mm -hmm. The me here witnessed it, and I threw up for a good solid week. But um, it was after that that um, Mengish Zita was put into position of king because he was the grandson of both Enki and Anlil. He combined the two lines. Now, they've had some horrific wars over who's going to be king. Some of these wars have been nuclear. They have reached the point where 80% of their male population is sterile. So they are facing the same question that every race that becomes a gray faces. Do we let ourselves die as what we are, or do we go into cloning to preserve ourselves? And for them, because we share so much of their DNA, they have the third option of interbreeding with us. And... the guardians are telling them that if they choose that third option, they have to become us, that they cannot stay separate and superior. Hmm. So they have to assimilate. Now, the good news is that that would raise our IQ and, and psionic abilities for the entire species over time. The bad news is that we would have a three-tier structure here. And that could potentially be a real problem. We're already having serious issues with inequality. And the folks that are have been running the show as the overseers under the Anunnaki have already started trying to reduce our numbers. So you add a third layer into that, and and in some ways, all I see is trouble. Yeah, so this, whatever this second coming of the Anunnaki that is being agendized on us right now, in the UFO movement, in this New Age spiritual communities, it ain't what you think it is, folks. It is something different. It is not the Anunnaki coming in to rescue us. It's not nobody's, what's happening here. Nobody's going to come in and rescue us. Mm -hmm. Nobody. We are a bunch of out-of-control two-year-olds. Nobody is going to come in and rescue us. If anything, we will be pushed back into a stage of no technology where we have to where we have to 
start over and hopefully learn better how to get along with each other. That's our biggest problem right now is this idea that I have to dominate you. And we each have this in our head. And that's the biggest problem because it's not about domination. It shouldn't be. We should be more cooperation, working together. But instead, we're stuck in this mine, mine, no, just like two-year-olds. And the trouble is our parents, the Anunnaki, have treated us like animals instead of like children. They're not teaching us better. Yeah, they gave us religion, but, but the religion as we have it now is still mind control, wallet control, and a layer of priests who are doing the mine. <laughs> Mine's bigger than yours. My toy's better. I'm not giving it to you. And you fight over the toys and creates a you toxic might, environment. You may have a pile of toys as tall as you are, but you still want that one. Exactly. The grass is greener on the other side. Uh, so it's like, like you said, if you bring in a third tier, that can make it worse. And then where are we then and now? So whatever this agenda is, the new agenda, the current flavor of trend, the second coming of the Anunnaki, they're already here. The Anunnaki never left. So it is something that is an agenda and it doesn't feel good to me and I'm not participating. You're not participating either. Yeah. Just doing your own thing and just trying to bring some truth and reality. What are the Anunnaki? What are the Anunnaki doing now? What did they do 450,000 years ago? Trying to bring some common sense truth. They to showed up here over 200,000 years ago. And they created us. And they stripped gold from this planet. They stripped other minerals from this planet. They stripped forests. They left this place a mess. And they left an occupation force that Marduk was the top of. And they can't live here as them because the nitrogen in our air is poisonous to them. So if they are going to live here, they have to interbreed with us to do it. And that's something that, that that's the physical reality. That's the historical reality. They have not been good to us the whole time that we've interacted with them. And they have deliberately bred us to fight in their wars. Do you think this is the first generation of super soldiers there ever was? Read through mythology. Look at Theseus and Perseus and, and Gilgamesh. And you can go on and on and on. Every culture going back thousands of years, five, 6,000 years, you've got names of demigods, you've got names of heroes, you've got names of folks who were super soldiers. Alexander the Great. You look through all of this and you find super soldiers. Most of them were men, some were women. Circe. She was a witch with magic powers. She was the daughter of Apollo. So she was a demigod. She had psi abilities. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Very I mean, much. You, you look at today's super soldiers and you have both men and women. The men are noted for their physical strength. They are noted for their intelligence. They are, are noted for their tempers. They are noted for going batshit crazy and killing themselves and their families. Well, gee, 
you look through the mythology and you find exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. The women are noted for their great beauty, their intelligence, which in history is is painted as as being um, <clears throat> manipulation. Mm -hmm. They were able to manipulate men. And they could do magic, which is psionics. And many of us who have been in these programs do things that, that are considered magic. All it is is really is, is energy manipulation. And because we've been through all of this stuff off world, we no longer fall for the bullshit here. Mm-hmm. It uh, really smells like an agenda of something, something, and it's not Anunnaki coming back. It's something else, which is for that person and those others following that to start out what that is. We're here to show you what the Anunnaki are and what the reality is of them. And you're friends with somebody who says they're in reincarnation of Anki and we have no trouble being friends with that person because they're not shoving anything on us oh I'm friends with people who who an assortment of folks who who believe they're they're incarnations of several several uh, Anunnaki and uh, most of them are stuck in ego I'm the gods. Thump, thump, thump. Um, a few of them realize that if they were one of the gods and, and they're here, that they, have an, that they have a mission. And some of them are working the mission. And those people I deeply respect. Um, I'm friends with Michael Lee Hill, who believes that he is a fractal incarnation of Enki. And he sees his mission as cleaning up the water using a, a frequency device based on four, 432 hertz. And he's doing great work. And I have no problems being friends with him. Me either. I do I agree with every detail that comes out of his mouth? Of course not. He doesn't agree with me either. And that's okay. We get along. We love each other. But we're not pushing anything on each other either. We're not pushing the second coming of Anunnaki as saviors coming here to save us. And genetically change us again. Where we are not pushing that on each other or the public. That's why the friendships work. Because we're not agendizing each other. We're using each other to promote something. I respect the work he's doing, and I respect the attitude he has about it. Same. Saving and the water is important. What, what his mission is, is one of the more important things going down. And I have the utmost respect for the man. Same. Now, we have... We have couple of people in the community who don't buy into that we were in space at all and some of them are still doing great work and you know uh, I have enough respect for their work to not fight with them all the time about the details mm -hmm. so uh, there are oh shoot a um, couple of the people that I do have issues with. Um, and I'm going to name names. It's okay. Uh, we don't need to name names. Dr. Dr. Farrell. Dr. Farrell is a doctor in religious studies, not medicine. Okay. He studied the church fathers. You know, the 100 AD to 300 AD time period. Okay. That's what his degree is in. He did a tremendous amount 
of research into the World War II era. He proved beyond any shadow of a doubt that there had to be a German breakaway civilization. So why can't he accept that anyone came back from it? <laughs> that's, that's my only question is, why is it so hard for him to accept that someone came back from it? I think they all want proof. These doctors, these researchers, they all want proof of something that we are writing books. You and I are writing books about proof and everything. To us, it makes sense. To them, it doesn't. I don't really go in, just like this researcher, Dr. Michael Sala, he's like, Oh, you hid everything, my comments about what I said to you, da-da-da-da-da. I'm like, whatever. I did not hide anything, whatever. He wants proof of things that he himself can't get proof of, and he is a gatekeeper to certain type of experiencers. That's fine. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, I'm finding that there are a lot of researchers or they call themselves researchers, who are actually just gatekeepers. Okay. Then there are channelers who don't know what they're channeling. Mm -hmm. There are psychics who also don't know what they're channeling. Sure. Uh, there are a tremendous number of people who watched videos and then had dreams, so assumed they were one of us. And they cannot go beyond the videos that they watched. And you can usually tell in, a, in one of their interviews because it's, well, so, just like Penny, just like Randy, just like Tony, just like, and they never actually say what they remember because they don't. Yeah. And then you've got the folks who are agents. And most of them actually admit to being agents. Now, I have this question. It's agencies that did this to us. Why are we listening to their agents? I find that the pool of people to talk to, to interview is getting smaller, smaller, and smaller. And the intelligence scale has to be high to talk to somebody, at least for me, for things to yeah. make 3D sense at some point in, in some capacity, because when it gets to, I'm an emissary of such and such, and I go on these wild missions, or I'm a military source, I found giants under blah, 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 and such, such incredible missions, they're beyond belief, even for what I can process as belief. When it gets so much into so many different missions, into so many realities, I just say, what is your real testimony? What are you now? Who are you now? Because when your testimony, I know there's soul growth and there's new experiences, but when there's 20 experiences in three months, there's something going on. Not everything is as it seems. That's too much experience. Isn't Am I wrong or is it growing so much out of proportion? It's hard to believe the unbelievable. Um, I, since I'm no longer on the radio network, I've been being contacted by more people than I can interview. Uh, most of them have been consistent with my criteria. And I've been pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, I've been having health problems, so I've been sticking to the one a week. And uh, there have been people from all over the world reaching out to me. Uh, some of them have been very different than I thought they would be once we started talking. And uh, the problem I'm having right now 
is that YouTube has clamped down on me and I'm not sure why. If I knew what I was doing wrong there, I could fix it. But since I don't, I'm having to transfer everything from YouTube to Rumble and Odyssey. Odyssey is very open to what I'm talking about. And, but they limit how much you can upload at a time. Yeah. Um, Rumble... I'm already to the point where I'm putting out $25 a month and the next step is $100 a month and I'm on social security. Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot of money. No. That's a lot of money, but at the same time, it has more audience. Yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm looking at this and going, okay, I had built my YouTube to almost 5,000 people and now I'm having to start over elsewhere because of censorship. It's mm -hmm. not that I don't have people to interview. It's that I'm being censored by the platform. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, am yeah, I right over the target or something? Is that what's going no, on? No, no, no. <laughs> it's other things. It's, it's, but I think as long as you keep to your true self, keep to your desires to interview, just do your own work however it's meant to be, whoever you want to interview, interview and post on platforms that welcome it and allow it. It's, I'm like, I'm, I'm over the gatekeeping. I'm over the secrecy. And what is your criteria? I'm just curious. What is your criteria? Do they make sense in 3D? Number one. Because I don't remember anything out in space that had different physics. Okay, that's number one. Do they make sense in 3D? Number two, do they make sense with what I know of the historical record? You know, um, I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of research into my family tree. And one of the things that I learned through, through that is a basic understanding of at least Western history. Um, I studied Eastern history when I was at San Diego State so that I would have some idea of what the rest of the world talks about. And that has actually confused some of the Asians who have reached out to me, oh, well, she, she knows about our, our culture too. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Shan Lang from Hong Kong actually came up here to visit me. And we went out to dinner at, at my favorite Chinese place. And she she was freaking out that I was eating with chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the little things. Um, she does tremendous work, by the way. Shan Lei. Um, tremendous work. Um, if you get a chance to to interview her sometime, she's she's worth talking to, even if it's not on air. She's mm -hmm. definitely worth the time very deep thinker uh so what do i look for do they make sense are they consistent with what i know of both physics and history um are they talking about things realistically or are they singing a hero song and i need to i need to define a hero song in human history especially it's really prevalent in the viking era a bunch of guys would go into battle and they watch their friends get killed and they'd end up cut up and they'd be stitching themselves back together around the campfire and drinking 
whatever alcohol they had. And the longer they drank, the better the stories got. And by the end of the week, they were pretty damn good heroes. But those were the stories they remembered and they told their family when they got home. And they told their grandkids. And we've got people in our community that are telling hero songs. So you can tell when you hear them. Oh yeah, we did this and we did that and we did all this stuff and we had magic powers and 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 and, and we were the bestest and the enemy was the evilest and and we just bumped their asses. Right. That that's a hero song. And that's what we're hearing right now in the community from certain somebody's the hero songs are huge and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is what is a tell when it gets a little it, too much. It gets, well, the last conference, they asked me what to look for, what I told people. And I go, if you think you're a hero, you need to dig deeper into those memories because you're just looking at the surface. Mm -hmm. There ain't none of us heroes out there. No, it's not about that. None of us are heroes. We were all kidnapped children. We were all in slavery, even if they gave us a title. None of us got paid. We couldn't leave when we wanted to. That's slavery. Mm -hmm. And when we got home, they wanted to pretend we didn't exist. And if we remember too much and start talking too much, they kill us. What do you call that? Do you call that a hero? No, that's not I, human. Not I humane. Call, I, I call that slavery. Yeah. So um we were slaves. Yeah. First off. Second off, what we were doing out there most of the time wasn't right. It's all about making money for somebody. Yeah. Or in my case, serving with the Germans, we were required to give military service to the Draco in exchange for the places we had colonies because those properties belonged to the Draco. Mm -hmm. That was our rent. So I was paying the rent. It's now, not does that it's it's not about being a hero. It's about no. this was the job that I did that paid the rent for a German colony. It's no. about survival. It's it's about existing out. Space is not a romantic space drama. It's real life stuff that happens, and it is dangerous. It is painful. It's not the easiest thing to survive being out there. And then you've got folks who are skeptics or have memories of another program who are coming out and saying, well, you guys are in some sort of sexy program. And, you know, it's all about blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, you're listening to hero songs. You're not listening to those of us who actually remember what we did. And out of, out of maybe, okay, if you picked out the top 100 people in the community, there's, what, a dozen of us? Yeah, like 10, maybe. At best. That, are, that, that are actual veterans telling the straight up truth? Yeah. It's getting smaller and smaller because, again... You know, well, I've got I've got a, a regular group of about 15 people that I can count on will make sense and tell the truth as they know it. Mm -hmm. And as if I, for some reason, don't have a guest that week, I can call up one of them and they're more than happy to come in. Good. And and I'm thankful for them because they make sense. They're rational. They're telling the truth as they know it. And that brings 
that brings dignity back to our community. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a hell of a lot of people out there that have just completely lost that concept. I agree. Totally agree. So I think we're at a good space where we've covered so much and um, we cover criteria too, which is wonderful. So people know what to look for in the future and currently, because again, so much happening in these communities, it makes me want to just stick to my own folks and to those I'm comfortable with and I've known for a while. And if I do speak to new people to interview, to interact with, your criteria is similar criteria to mine as well, because I'm not going to have folks on my show who are telling hero stories, who are creating things beyond belief that is so unbelievable. It is too much. So it's like, what makes sense in 3D reality? That makes sense. It's like, just, just, part, of, just part of trying to understand who the real ones are, who the infiltrators are, who are the ones that are just listening to others' stories and just putting themselves into the narrative because that can happen. And I mean, every person is experiencing something in their own reality. So yes. uh, one of the things that that has amazed me was the group of uh, folks I gathered that were related to the Montauk program. I did that completely by feel. Because a couple of them, when they first came out, they weren't, they didn't sound rational at all, but I felt they were real. And then when I got them onto a round table together and the CIA ar archivist popped in and she verified all of them. That really surprised me because I had expected one or two of them to not be. And, and yet I knew they felt real. Mm -hmm. So it, it, now I'm wondering, how did I know? <laughs> Intuition, gut feeling, um, feeling that, hey, there's truth in what's being told here. And that truth needs yeah. to be expressed more and investigated. So trusting inner gut usually brings something out that is a reality that you know something that is important to look more into and explore with those individuals. So I think we're good where we are today. So thank yes. you, Penny, for being on my show. And you're always thank welcome. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I look forward to the next time as well. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.